Good morning, class. Today we're going to be talking about essays, and I really want to give you a step-by-step, -step, comprehensive tutorial on how the writing process works and what each step of the writing process is meant to get out of your essay, or what you're supposed to get out of it for your essay. Um, I've added a few small things just to um, make it easier to understand. I've given you some examples, so we're going to look through this and see how you do. So, a step-by-step -step guide to unpacking a prompt and writing an essay. So let's start with our I can and our agenda. Let's read the I can together. I can understand what a prompt is asking me to write, organize my ideas logically, and write a coherent essay using language mechanics and conventions. And I'll give you a definition for language mechanics later. Our agenda is basically the steps of the writing process that I've outlined. You're usually familiar with seven. I have nine, and we'll explain that as I go through. But I've broken up prompt and brainstorming, so we'll look at each of those individually. Then we'll write our thesis. Then we'll get to writing our body paragraphs. We'll organize them and revise them. We'll make our bookends, which is the introduction and conclusion. Finally, we'll edit and give it the final touches, such as formatting, checking your citations, all of that. So let's look at our prompt. Your prompt will tell you what kind of essay you're supposed to write. So remember expository, right here? Expository means an explanatory essay. You're explaining something, usually the pros and cons, or you're explaining the different intricacies of a problem, something like that. So it'll ask you, like, why do you believe bullying is a problem in schools? Or what steps can we take? Or explain a position, right? Next we have persuasive, which is pretty explanatory. Not expository, but uh, self-explanatory. Uh, it's persuade someone else. You're persuading your audience to do something. So it'll probably use words like convince or persuade. Finally, in English, we have our expository, our persuasive, and our narrative. Narrative is more of a personal story. Think back to your tax or your star essays. So imagine you are in 1860 London, or tell me a story, or tell a personal experience. One of those words. You'll also find that that's not the only thing, or the only types of papers you'll encounter. More essays you can write are, you can write a research paper, which is a very specific type of paper. You can write a compare and contrast paper, which is like our compare and contrast short answers, but just longer, as you would imagine. And you can write historical, so if you end up being a history major in college, you'll need to write lots of essays, but they'll follow a different structure than, say, a regular expository essay. It'll be more chronological, you'll draw on more sources, We'll talk about that. So the first thing you have to do is decide what your prompt is asking you to write. Then you need to brainstorm, and brainstorming is my favorite part of this. You can use any kind of graphic organizer you like. You can do bullet points. This one is a typical five paragraph essay organizer where you have your three body paragraphs, your intro and your conclusion. But you can also think in more of a chronological way, giving events as they happen. You can use something more fun, like a like a semantic map or a or a brainstorming cloud. You can use a problem and solution map, especially if you're in the science field and you want to write an APA paper on a specific problem and how we can solve it, i.e. global warming, etc. Or you can make it fun. So I was talking about global warming. Here is a beautiful map that talks about the solutions, Gaia theory, all of these different things. So make sure that when you're doing that, you organize them by topic or idea. You, want, you don't want to spread out your ideas too much. You want to make sure that they're all in little sections. You can find what you need quickly. Next, you write your thesis. Dun, dun, dun. This changes depending on the prompt and the type of paper you want to write. So usually, you'll write a topic, and then you'll state a claim, and then you'll argue your claim. So look at this uh, thesis that I've just come up with. Fashion magazines, which is our topic, are detrimental to young women, which is our claim, because they negatively impact self-esteem. So I've given a, a little bit of evidence to back my claim. This could be for an expository paper or a persuasive paper. For a persuasive paper, you would use stronger language, like fashion magazines are the worst part of our society because they you know, lead young women to suicide in very extreme cases. So that would be a more impactful thesis, but if we're going expository, we want it to seem more logical, more reasonable. Um, 
during a research paper, your thesis is actually the answer to your research question. So first you would ask your question. I've been helping someone work on a paper for Fidel Castro, and their question is, how was he so successful? Right? That was her research question. And so she starts researching and she finds out that the answer to her question is because he's so manipulative and charismatic. That when he speaks to people, anyone would understand what's what's happening, right? So your research question is why was Fidel Castro so uh, successful? And your research thesis would be Fidel Castro, which would be our topic, was so successful, our claim, because he was masterful at oration, or he was very good at speaking to public, and he was very good at using his manipulation and his charisma in front of large groups of people. So, different ways that, that you can ex uh, use this uh, organization to write a thesis for your paper. So then, you write. Now that you have the, your thesis in mind, now that you, you know what direction you want your paper to take, just write. Just get your ideas on the page. You don't have to worry too much on your style. Um, you should use complete sentences just so that it makes sense later, right? But you're just writing out your body paragraphs. Try to keep each paragraph focused on one topic. To do that, you can probably utilize an outline, which I have on the worksheet that you're following along with. And you also want to be sure to consider your audience. So if you're writing a persuasive paper, like persuade your peers to recycle, then you want to make sure that you're writing in a language that suits your audience. Or if you're turning in a college essay, let's say for some of you upcoming graduating seniors, if you're writing for a college admissions board, you're going to want to use very academic language, right? So consider your audience, loose, use complete sentences, but if you get stuck somewhere, the point is to get your ideas on the page. So you can leave a space. I usually just do two parentheses and leave a space in, the, in between. Um, and then you can come back and fill those in later. But right now we're just getting your ideas on the page. Um, once you have all of your, uh, all of your paragraphs, ooh, excuse me. Once you have all of your paragraphs, you can write them on index cards, you can print them out individually, but make sure you have them separate and then you organize. So when you're organizing, you want to first find out what kind of paper are you writing and what organization best serves that purpose. So if you're writing, we talked earlier about a historical paper, that's going to be more chronological. If you're talking about a series of events and their consequences, then you're going to want to list your paragraphs by the date that, let's say, your person did them. Let's say you're doing a history paper, but it's more geography. You're looking at the geography of the Battle of Yorktown, right? You can use spatial. Space, either concrete or abstract, meaning concrete space would be if I'm looking at this room right here and I have you know, my recording station and I have my laptop and I have my visual aid, that I could talk about why I put each of these things where they are. It's a concrete space. But more abstract space is talking about like the space between ideas. What is the space that occupies moderacy between liberal and conservative uh, political parties. So you can talk about spatial, uh, concrete, or abstract, abstract space. You can go topically, you can go through each idea and see how each idea relates to one another. This is probably going to be the hardest one to try to organize because it's more up to your intuition as to where paragraphs best fit in with themselves. Whereas chronological, you look up the date and that's where it goes. Um, we have logical and then general to specific. And these are very um, specific types of organization. So logical is making connections between ideas. Think about a problem and a solution like the global warming paper I was talking about. You want to first start off with that problem and explain everything about the problem and then you transition and move on to your solution and you draw connections between those. You, you pro progress through the problem logically. You can also do cause and effect that way. Um, general to specific is more of a speech writing tactic, um, but it's still a tactic that's, that's used in essays quite often. And so you can go from general to specific or specific to general. So let's take uh, bullying, right? If you want to go to general, from general to specific, you would first start off with, you know, bullying as a nationwide problem. And then you would, as you go farther in your essay, you would move down to, in your school, what can you do? If you're going specific to general, you can first talk about, you know, um, on October 18th, you know, bullying led some, cyberbullying led someone to suicide, which I've now mentioned twice. This isn't going to be a very sad uh, lesson. Um, but that one 
instance of bullying can then snowball and lead to a greater effect. So you start with specific and then you end with the general problem, like the significance of everything. So really make sure that you think about what you're trying to achieve in your essay and then pick the organization that works best. Once you have all of your body paragraphs and you have them in the order that you know that your final paper is going to have them in, you want to revise. The biggest thing right here, the biggest thing when you revise is you want to make sure that you mention your thesis in every single paragraph. No matter how many paragraphs you have, you want to make sure that you mention your thesis. When I say mention, you don't need to make a big deal out of it. You don't restate your concrete thesis every time. But if you're talking about how Fidel Castro was successful, in your first paragraph you're talking about how he was a child, and then you can say he used his charisma from an early age when, and then you give an example. And then in the next sentence, that's mentioning. You've mentioned that he was successful because he was charismatic. In the next one, when you're talking about him in law school, you can say he learned how to orate effectively in law school. Using that oration effectively, that was part of our thesis too. So you just mention it, you layer it in in every single paragraph to make sure that you're really hidden home. Then, after you've done that, you can add topic and transition sentences, which are very important. You can rewrite sentences to clarify meaning. You can go back and fill in those blanks that you left when we were on step four. Um, look for flow and tense. So if you're writing a historical essay and you're talking about things that Fidel Castro did, you should make sure that every time you use an adverb or an adjective about what Castro did, it's past tense. So look for tense every single time. Look for flow, look for your syntax. Make sure that you don't have too many short sentences piled up one after the other. Make sure to spread them out. At this point, you can also add direct quotes. So from uh, before this, you've only been working with your ideas. It's probably something that you've drawn from your research or your prompt. But you've been working on your own ideas. Now it's time to layer in extra evidentiary support. So we have revised, and now we have something that looks like a pretty decent paper. But we need our bookends, which is our introduction and our conclusion. And if you imagine bookends, bookends are usually mirror images of each other. So we want to... Uh, start the introduction by hooking the reader, giving them something important, something that makes them want to read on. That'll be the last thing that you do in your conclusion, because remember, they're bookends. So you start with something that will engage your reader, and you end with something that will engage your reader. Then you introduce your main ideas in your introduction. This can be a little confusing. Let's focus on the introduction. You hook your reader, you introduce your main ideas. Fidel Castro was important because he, you know, conquered Cuba and then changed the geopolitical landscape of the Caribbean. Uh, bullying is a nationwide problem because there are so many avenues to bully someone nowadays. Stuff like that. You introduce those main ideas, let your reader know what you're going to talk about. Then you can give time period and context, and the very last sentence of your introduction is your thesis. Right? The thesis is the last sentence of the first paragraph. Moving on to the conclusion, you start off by um, restating your thesis. So it's the last sentence of your first paragraph and the first sentence of your last paragraph. You want to hit home really soon in your conclusion. You say, bullying is a nationwide problem that we have all experienced, right? Whatever your thesis was. You can make bigger connections. You can connect that general to specific. You can connect different points in that his uh, chronological historical paper. You can... Um, talk about what bridges the problem and solution in the scientific paper. Just make sure that you're drawing bigger connections, that you're evaluating your own writing. Um, and then you can explain your significance. Uh, one of the best pieces of information that I've ever gotten is if your conclusion doesn't make you want to do a mic drop, then it is not strong enough. You should be using very significant, heavy hitting things to close your essay and leave an impression on your reader. Because let's go back to those college essays. If that application board doesn't remember your paper at the end of the day, you haven't made the impression that you wanted to make. So make sure that you end on significance or end on something that will make your readers go, wow, or like that was a paper, right? So we've done our bookends, which means we now have every paragraph in our paper. So we have to do our final touches and editing is not so fun because it means you proofread and proofread and proofread and proofread and proofread. And proofread. You proofread for grammar. Remember, grammar is when we're talking about um, 
you know, where words belong and, you know, putting sentences one by one and making sure that there's flow. Flow deals more with syntax. I'm going to give you a definition for that. They're the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. So when you're creating those well-formed sentences, you want to make sure that you use your clauses, your adverbs correctly, your prepositions. You want to make sure that everything is in a ship shape, right? You want to look for your mechanics. So when we're speaking, we have to be cognizant of those um, grammar things that we're, you know, so often uh, nitpicked about. But mechanics are the conventions of print that do not exist in oral language. So mechanics include spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and paragraph structure. So you want to be very careful about your mechanics because your audience is going to be reading this essay. So they're going to be looking for those typos and those small little things that'll catch you out in the end. Finally, you want to look for redundancy. When you have all your paragraphs on the page and you've already rewritten, sometimes you'll notice that in two lines back to back, you'll have the same word that just happens to line up in the right, in the same space. And I know that that seems so silly. It's like it wouldn't be redundant if you were saying it. They wouldn't notice the repetition of that word. But because of the way it falls on the page, you see community and community and community right there in that paragraph. So you want to check for your redundancy and then just use a thesaurus. If the first time you say community, and the second time, you, second time you say group, and the third time you say family or you say hierarchy or any of those words, you've eliminated that redundancy from the look of your paper. So thesaurus, dictionary, those things have been important from the beginning of this process, but here is where I typically use them. Nine, the final step. So our final touches. You want to check your assignment sheet to make sure that for your college admission essay or for your history paper or whatever, that you're using the correct formatting. If none are given, it's typically a good idea to use a legible font, usually Times New Roman, 12 point. You want to have one inch margins all the way around your paper. There should be a margins or a layout tab on Microsoft Word when you use it. And you want to give a header with your name, the date submitted or the date due. A lot of people write the date that they started their paper. But that can be very confusing for a teacher because we don't know all of the papers that you've been doing. I just want to look through my papers and see that I have every paper that was turned in on November 6th, right? So you want your name, your date due, and the class. Um, and then your citations. So citations can sometimes be very important, like in a research paper, and sometimes they can be less important, like a problem solve or cause effect. For a, for a star essay, right? But if you need your citations, it's a good idea to use Purdue OWL, which is what I have right here. Purdue is a famous college that has created the online writing lab where they give extra tips on how to write papers. They give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the three most common types of citations, which are MLA, which is for language or English papers, APA, which is used for science and humanities, and Chicago, which is used for uh, history type papers, right? If you look at Purdue Owl and you don't find the very specific rule that you need, you can always go to the .orgs for each of those citations because they're very preppy and they're very posh and they have their own websites. So you can go to mla.org and look at exactly, you know, if you have two, author, two authors, two editors, and an in-text citation to a primary source. How do I cite that in my paper? This is where you're going to want to go. So once you've made sure that you have your uh, formatting and your uh, citations done and you have proofread, 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 and you make sure that your paper is just absolutely as fabulous as you are, you're done. So uh, keep calm and write your essay. I'm going to go over a summary and then our I can statement one more time. The summary is that essay writing is a time consuming process. It's important to go through the steps of the writing process to make sure that you have a well-organized and a logical essay. If you just use your rough draft and you just write all your ideas on page and turn it in, it probably won't flow as, bad, flow as well as if you had gone through the revision and editing process. Um, so that's what we learned today and that directly correlates to our I can statement, which is I can understand what a prompt is asking me to do. Remember to look for those marker words. I can organize my ideas logically using the organizational structures that we looked at today and I can write a coherent essay using language mechanics and conventions. Those mechanics being the things that appear in written words that aren't in oral speech. Um, 
And once you've done all that, you're golden. So turn in your paper and good luck with everything you're doing. Thank you.